Oh my god. And Perona just dipped too. Yo, Meox about to go on a spree. Oh my god. Navy shish kebab sushi. back to will the scry this is the first episode that i am personally starting up i think it comes to no surprise that um this this project that we have going on i want to extend on my own as i react to the newer episodes that come out um part one of wano just ended and now we're about to start up part two and the last couple episodes had me on my feet and i just figured you know it, it would be a waste to not catch my reaction as future scenes unfold similar to when Zoro um, fought the now we know is killer but at the time we didn't that blew my mind or when I realized it was killer way before I think the average person did just from like cues and hints um, other examples being Big Mom fighting Kaido I was like literally losing my shit <coughs> jumping up and down in my living room um, and that's just by myself so I figured you know I want to share this experience um, with you guys obviously this means that Scryerman won't be joining me for these episodes I'm gonna miss his like design um, esque abilities especially when it comes to doing things like the thumbnails but I, I think I'll figure it out um, this is going to be put on a separate channel list on the channel, different playlist. Um, Skyrim is obviously not allowed to watch this content whatsoever. Um, in fact, I'm going to try and create the thumbnails and hide them to the best of my ability so that it's appealable to you guys, but still he could look at it and be like, I don't understand what's going on, which is, you know, the purpose. Um, with all that being said, like I said, we're jumping into Wano Part 2. I saw the, the title headline. For those of you who don't know, because I haven't talked about myself and my, my opinions on a lot of things, I often find that scenes like The Reverie or um, Water 7 when Garp appears for the first time, those scenes when they talk about the world building to be the most exciting parts for me personally even more than you know action scenes and stuff like that so um this one seemed very very promising from the headline and i just i couldn't resist putting this on on video and actually getting live on my own so with that said let's start the episode up there we go Oh, shit. <sighs> oh, this is a flashback. Okay. Thought he was on the ship with him for a second. <laughs> Seven more lords of the sea. Damn, I thought that was just a passing comment. I knew it would play a role, but not this soon. What? What? I didn't read the whole headline. Oh my god. Damn, got some gray hair in him now. All right, so they made it back. Sure, how she's not kidnapped. Ooh. 
What? Yo, let's go. I love that she addresses him as Luffy's grandpa. Shit, wasn't expecting to see Garp. That's interesting. We don't play too much in the role of religion in, in this series that he mentions that. I feel like it's not brought up a lot. so they didn't even realize. That was a sick visual. Oh, shit. Oh! I'm literally in the middle of the Alabasta arc with Scryerman right now. This is about to be crazy. Oh, shit. Alright, so we know that the... That Vivi's family have ties to one of the great weapons. Similar to Shirohoshi, who's a different one. This guy. The animation is like really up for the scene to be about newspaper and reporting. Like this is, he looks so animating, cartoony. Looks like a movie. <gasps> this looks like a movie. Oh, so he can scrap? Oh. I don't know, homie had hands like that. Animation is crazy for this guy. <laughs> I'm getting serious light vibes right now from those eyes. Oh, this is what I'm talking about. These episodes, bro. These are my kind of episodes.
Uh, of course, that piece of shit is leaking shit from the reverie. What is going on? So this is supposed to be hidden. Dragons freaking out. Ooh. Yo, all the revolutionaries are freaking out. All right, I'm fucking anxious right now. Yo, my heart is sunk right now, please. Oh my god, no. How does he get access to newspapers like that? Oh my god. I thought he was going to get assassinated because of what he knows. Holy. Damn, this has got Blackbeard. Yo, he looks fresh. I didn't see that beard yet. He actually has a beard now. Hold up. Sabo is dead? Is this the Crow Revolutionary? No, this is Wano. Drake. What? What? I knew that Drake was double timing Kaido. Kobe? Why Kobe? What the f- Oh my god! <laughs> Let's go! I mean, that one was kind of obvious that he was two-timing, but... How is Kobe reporting into him? He was under Garp. Unless he's under Garp. Oh my god, man. This is nutty. And Kobe's a captain. He's the title of captain, so. Mm hmm. Yeah, so Drake's just deep undercover. Kobe's really become a big shot that he's the confidant here for such a <laughs> crucial operation. Mm. Okay, so this is actually supposed to be low-key even for the Navy. It has to be vetted through GARP, I guarantee you. Uh-huh. 
Mm-hmm. Naturally. <laughs> I was just watching the openings and and wondering why they they had focus on the seven warlords. Holy, f warlords are done. They're cut. Nah, B. They can't mess with the Amazon Lily people. I don't care who you are. You got to have an admiral with you. Oh my god. Buggy is done, Mihawk! <sighs> oh my god, who is gonna dare try and capture Mihawk? What on earth? The Reverie. I mean, there's hardly any of them left. <laughs> Luffy single-handedly either recruited them or destroyed them. Poor Buggy. He just became recognized. Oh my god. Kuma's done. Doflamingo's captured. Jinbei, Crocodile. None of that. It's really just Boa and Mihawk. And Buggy. This is crazy that this is what I'm watching with Skyrim right now. Like, we're about to... Yup. Blackbeard. Just to get in dip all down. Mm-hmm. Jinbei. Now with the Straw Hats. Mm-hmm. Moria. Kaput. And now presumably killed by Blackbeard. I don't think so, but maybe recruited. That's probably the world government's ties. It's Takedo and the Doflamingo is the the smile fruit in some capacity. Mm-hmm. And then Law was the warlord. Yep. Allied. This is nuts. Yep. Mm hmm. Naturally. And I guess they know where the warlords are. I was going to say, like, what's the difference between them and any other pirate they could go out and capture? But they know where Boa is. And they know where Buggy is. <laughs> Yo, look at them. 
I love how Mr. Three's with him. Oh my god. My man has been eating some lion nuggets. Oh yeah, I forgot this guy joined the warlords. Oh my god, and Perona just dipped too. Yo, Meox about to go on a spree! Oh my god, Navy Shish Kebab Sushi. Oh my gosh. Boa has to leave so that her kingdom doesn't get arrested with her. Buggy stepped up, I can see. Ooh, I love his new design. True. Alvida, Mr. Three. Yeah, and he's got all the homies from Impel Down. He doesn't have that much to be afraid of, even if he's not particularly strong. This is nuts. Full on, like, barrier stampede. I mean, yeah, they're not the warlords for nothing. <laughs> oh, he's loving it. Wow, Alvita looks different too. <laughs> Let's go! Oh my god, wait, we still don't know what happened to Sabo. Wow, this warlord. That. Oh, I don't even know where to start. This is, I'm so glad I started this up on this episode. I don't know where to start. Let's start with the Warlords. I mean, that's crazy that they're just taking Vice Admirals and stuff and then putting them against the the Warlords. To to their point, I mean, they're strong. Like they're they're they ain't, they ain't nothing. Some of them have whole kingdoms behind them. Mihawk himself is the strength of a whole kingdom. I wonder if the ba baboons will fight with him too. That's crazy how everything unpacked like that, where you. Oh, I love the writing of this whole scene, right? Like, it starts off with that really tragic, it sounds like tragic news with Sabo. Actually, even before that, just you know that there's rumblings from the reverie that happened. You don't know the little details, and you start to pick up on things. You know there's something happening with the warlords. You know that there's something um, happening with, uh, with the revolutionaries, but they don't actually... It, it all starts intermingling. And then you know something's happening with Kaido and the world government, and then... And then Kobe is talking to Drake, and that's one mind-blowing reveal. And then in the middle of that, you find out that he's going to Boa Hancock's Island, and that's when they reveal that they're going to go take them down. That This is nuts. It makes total sense that um, the Nefertari family, as well as the, the kingdom um, that uh, Doflamingo governed, they would want to abolish the warlord system. It makes sense that a lot of other kings went along with it. And it makes sense that the government wanted to cover that up so that the warlords didn't um, get the heads up. But that is obviously what Wapple had, you know, given the, the heads up to Morgan's, the, the, the reporter on. Wow. This is nuts. I love that Buggy had such a big, like, front for a second there, and I was like, all right, like, maybe he is stepping up, but no, it's, it's the same old Buggy. Do love his character design. I, I think he's, 
um, really, really cool now. And I love how Mr. Three and Alvita are still kind of kicking it with him. And he still has all those pirates from um, uh, Impel Down. So curious to see what happens with the island of uh, Boa Hancock's Amazon Lily and how they handle um, Kobe. And it looked like there were some notable vice admirals there that I recognize from the war and just like past stories and stuff like that on their way. Um, Mihawk, it's not even like... I'm glad Perona has gone, so she's not caught up in like the 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 craziness of it. But like, bruh, I'm so amped to see how Mihawk is now forced into the limelight. He's always been doing his own thing on on the on the side, um, but never had to do anything unless it was like super government mandated, like the War of the Best against Whitebeard. Um, but now he's, he's, he's a pirate again. Like he has to pledge his allegiances. Can you imagine if he, if he linked up with Shanks? I mean, that's his like closest friend. Oh my God. There's just so much to, to take in here. Sabo, I, I don't think he's dead. I mean, we've already, we've already dealt with that one time where he thought he was dead as a kid. It was kind of obvious that he wasn't going to be. Still made me verge of cry, if not actually cried. I can't remember when he did get revealed, even though it was obvious. Um, uh, so I, I would be surprised if he's dead here. That being said, I do have a whole theory about how if Luffy truly is the one that's going to become king, there can't really be blood ties if that makes sense and that's why i thought it was fitting as sad as it was that spoiler you know when he's died um if the son of goldie roger was alive it wouldn't make sense for someone else to become the king it was kind of like my headspace with it so sabo being alive even though he's a revolutionary totally different aspect totally different side of things and what he his goals and personal achievements are um but you know it would also make sense, even if he's not dead, that he'd be reported as such. Because, I mean, why why would you, if you're trying to make a, a stamp or a staple amongst the world government and say you're actually taking a hit at the, at the revolutionaries, even if you have him captured, it wouldn't make sense to say you had him captured. It makes sense to say that you killed him. Um, but there are a lot of signs, even though they didn't outright say it, pointing towards him being, you know, deceased. Because, and I think the biggest example of that is Dragon's reaction. That is probably the most stoic person we've seen in this entire show, bar none. And the fact that he was that flabbergasted just sent a shiver down my spine and my anxiety just blew the f*** up. So, wow. Wow. Again, really glad that I, uh, I recorded this, and I'm going to try and get this up tonight um, so it's not too long after the news, but <sighs> One Piece, man. This is, what I, this is what I'm talking about. I guess I'll, I'll leave it on the last note here that this is pretty crazy that, um, that there are so many direct ties to Alabasta, and if you... Um, see this video, but you aren't following our like main purpose of the channel, and that's catching my my cohort, my companion in arms here, Scryerman, up with the series. We've just entered Alabasta, just saw um, uh, Crocodile like uh, two episodes ago for the first time, and obviously it's going to lead to this climax, and it'll be really interesting after just watching this, and I'll probably go back and watch some initial stuff on the, like the Reverie. And then watching everything unfold with Crocodile in real time. Because you know there's a lot of ties with the Nefertari family. I think we know that Nefertari, um, that Vivi had a sword in her from Emu. Um, and Shir Hoshi was the other one. So we know that they both have ties to the three great giant weapons of the world that can destroy the world. Um, it's going to be really, really interesting. But with that being said, can't wait for the next one. Uh, thank you for tuning in. I'm Kirk D. Cam, and this is Will of the Scry.